that are victims and that are living in terror every single day of their lives when it comes to abuse and it's something that is so frequent here in South Africa and it's something that seriously needs to be attended to. I mean we heard earlier the words national crisis being thrown around and, and I wonder if it, if it is. I mean I wonder if it is viewed in that light. Well uh, to talk a little bit more about gender violence and many other issues affecting South Africans I'm joined by the former AU chair, our uh, very own and course is Anat Lamini Zuma. It is so good to see you again and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Yeah. I call you our very own because I know that you're a lady of the continent, but we, we, you are ours. You are our South Africa. I am. <laughs> yes. Um, when we talk about gender violence, and I know that this is a, obviously an issue that's very, very close to your heart. I mean, that's why you're here. Talk to us about how bad the situation is and what we need to do to better it. Well, I think it's bad when you have women being killed um, by their husbands, by their boyfriends, by, and being beaten up and just, I think it's bad. And in any case, it shouldn't really happen. But we need to look at it, work on it, almost collectively, all of us. Women have to be organized and work with men who do not agree with that. Because if we work alone, it will not work either. But we also need to, to deal with it even at home. We, we shouldn't allow it to happen at home and hope that when kids are older, they will stop. But we also need to, I think, now see how we, women can also as assist to empower themselves so that they are not as vulnerable uh, because for instance I was reading research that when people want to attack somebody in the street they look at them and if they if they look at them and feel that they are walking with confidence and they back off and look at somebody who looks vulnerable and weak so I think but also we need to look at What's causing this? Why are men uh, doing this? And, and, and look at it in a more holistic way. But of course, where it happens, it has to be reported. And the law must take its course. But we need to also look at why. Yeah. Do you think if we had a female president here in South Africa, and this is, uh, it could be a great reality, do you think it'll help the situation? We live in a patriarchal society, and perhaps it is not top of the agenda, but do you think as a female president, and you yourself are in the running um, for the presidency of the ANC, would this be one of your top priorities to tackle? Well, I think it should, it should really be something that society as a whole must look at. And of course, a female president cannot avoid looking at it and, and making it a priority. But I don't think one person can make a difference because it's a societal issue. You have to mobilize society around it to, to, to succeed, not just one person, though that one person would be important. Yeah. It certainly would be and perhaps Given a different circumstance, and I do, and I am going to put you on the spot a little bit, I mean, we've got a, 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 a government minister, a deputy minister, who is in a situation where he's been accused of violence, he's been accused of abuse against a woman. We've seen videos, we've got witnesses. As, what would you do in a different situation? What, if you were in a leadership position, would you allow him to still be the minister, the deputy minister of, of, of higher education? Well, I think... In his case, it's different because he has even admitted. So, because normally you would say the law must take its cause and so on, but he has admitted. So I think um, it's fair to act on it because he, we, we've, we've seen and he has said he has, he has done it. So you would wait in the same position for the law to take its course? No, I'm saying you should act on it okay. because he has admitted yeah. because if you don't if you act when he hasn't admitted then they will say you are judging yes, yes. So, so i'm just saying in his case i think it's different because he has admitted yeah. so you can act on it Absolutely. remove him from the position yes yeah. 
if let, let's talk about the presidential race how how is it going i mean from the outside it looks like a tough one it really does um but how are you handling how how is it working for you it is obviously any contestation is tough uh, but you just have to take it in your stride yeah. and um, work as best as you can keep it as dignified as as it can be uh, do it with integrity and then see what happens mm. and if you don't win you support the winner yeah. if you win you you also embrace the losers yeah. I mean, obviously, there's at a time like this, emotions are running high, and 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 most people just saying that uh, you are in this position, running, and uh, the idea is that you will just help our president Jacob Zuma out of any problems that he does have. But what do you say to your critics? Well, if he has problems, why don't they just bring the problems up right now? Secondly, why would I? Why, why am I linked? to him in that way. I'm a South African in my own right. I've got my own ID. I've been in the struggle in my own right. I've served in this government for almost 18 years. Nobody has said when President Mandela appointed me Minister of Health that I'm being appointed because. When President Begi appointed me, nobody complained I was foreign minister for 10 years. I was Minister of Home Affairs. In fact, everybody was pitying me when I was being sent to Home Affairs. But I, I worked in Home Affairs. I went to, to Addis. Why now? I think they are being malicious, they are being dishonest, and they are just being vicious and patriarchal and sexist. That's what I say. Your credentials certainly speak for themselves. They really do. I mean, if if we look at credentials, you are uh, in the top running for the job. But I think, I think perhaps what the one thing is is that you do have children with the the the, the president. You are his ex-wife, and I suppose that is something that people keep in the back of their mind the whole time. Sure, I have children with him. I was married legally married to him. I haven't been married to him for the past next year. It will be 20 years. And I really don't see why I'm being linked in that way, except that they just want to use it against me. Not that they think there's anything practical that will be bad for the country. I don't think so. Yeah. Yes, I do have children with him, and it's not a, it's not a problem. Shall we then go to every candidate and see who they have children with? and see who have, they've been married to before. Is that what we should do? I don't do it because I don't think it's relevant. On a final closing note, obviously we've got the ANC Women's League that are here in, in big numbers. They have endorsed you, they support you all the way. What does this mean for your campaign, to have the Women's League behind you? Well, I think for me, it's, it's, it's very encouraging. But also, it takes you from being factional because if you are endorsed by a constitutional structure, it, it, it makes life easy because you're not, you are not being endorsed by a group of individuals. You are being endorsed by a constitutional structure, which is the Women's League, and a constitutional structure, which is the Youth League, um, and I appreciate it. But of course, the test is the branches whether the branches do the same. Yeah. Interesting few months ahead of you. Thank you for talking to us. Enjoy this, uh, this function here today for women and in support of women that need it the most. Thank you very, very much for being our guest. Thank you. All right. That was uh, uh, former AU chairperson, of course, Zana Dlamini-Zuma, Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini, talking to us here on Morning Live. Let's take a break.